How does government ever keep up? Breathlessly, yeah. <laughs> Breathlessly, but it can never it can never be ahead of the curve, can it? Because not um, least because a lot of these new companies are operating, as I read in your book, uh, yeah. operate successfully in in what you call the lag in the lag. You know yeah. that there there lies the opportunity and. Once the opportunity has been seized, that territory has been seized, and the government then are so the government's always on the back foot. So you, you as a, as a former mm-hmm. government minister in Singapore, and your former colleagues, who presumably a number of whom are still still in government, I mean, how and Singapore we see the rest of the world sees as this as this great sort of um, uh, what should we say kind of beacon of forward thinking. How, how, are, how are they thinking? Mm-hmm. Uh, so w- we actually have loads of examples out of China. Uh, like I say, if you look at Alibaba and financial and so on, um, it's not from the lack of trying to see how best to regulate the different and the growings of uh, you know, range of services that N Financial was providing or is providing. Uh, you know, leading up to the point when when they were sort of uh, taken to task, um, it's it's always the timing. When when do you act? When do you decide that regulations uh, need to be imposed, and how stiff should those regulations be? Uh, I think every market has its own uh, sort of uh, unique characteristics, which will require a very different answer. And for a market as big as China, obviously. When it comes, boom, you know, uh, right down there, the, the impact is like really widespread. Um, whereas when it's um, when it's a smaller country, it's it's a, a lot more challenging because you, you you don't want to proactively act to kill off, you know, innovation. So.